Hello, welcome back to my channel. I'm Siobhan and this is Bow Books. Um, today's bow is, it's probably hard to see, it's a little hair bow, like hair band. Um, I put my hair up because it's kind of gross today. Uh, sorry about that. Um, usually I do book reviews, but today I thought I'd do something a little bit different, mix it up a little bit um, and go through what is currently on my to be read pile. It's not going to be like a full list because there are books in all my bookcases. There are more bookcases you can't see like down here um and there's also like ebooks and stuff like that that i've got that i need to read um but these are the ones that are currently sitting <laughs> waiting for me to read them on my little pile which is like as i said before like right here um so without further ado let's begin so the first one i've got in the pile is uh every day by david levison i think that's how you say his last name I don't know, he's written some really good books. Um, I think... I don't think it was the fact that it's a motion picture that grabbed me. It was like the, the little premise here. I don't know if you can see it where... Like... That they're always in a different body every day they wake up. I think that's really fascinating. I've read a couple of books where um, it's like body swap sort of stuff. Um, so it's kind of like a Freaky Friday, but eternally in different bodies. So it's not like swapping with someone you know um yeah and uh i think david leverson's a really good writer um what else have i read of his <laughs> i can't remember what other books i've read of his but um i know i'm going to enjoy it when i finally get to it and i've just realized that's uh that's ned from spider-man so yeah i'm probably gonna have to watch this after i've read it <laughs> so that'll be a good one um that's a young adult story so like you're gonna see a theme running through all this next one i bought um quite near the start of lockdown i haven't read because i've been reading other things but it's called call it what you want and who's it by bridget camera i don't know um i think i just thought the cover was really pretty and i liked all this like let letters turn into hearts yeah origami the back blurb it says rob had it all but when his dad was caught embezzling funds from half the town everything changed now rob's the social pariah who lost everything his friends his status even his family megan was a typical overachiever until the pressure got to her last year and now that her sister is pregnant pretending to be a perfect family might be too much to handle when rob and megan are paired together at school they're both reluctant to let down the walls they've built but rob's plan to fix the damage caused by his father could ruin more than their fragile new friendship so um yeah, I've not read any of Bridget's other books, but that sounds like an interesting premise to me. Um, as well as being like quite a typical love story, I think sometimes you just need a story that's uh, that's familiar and comforting as well. Like um, lately, my chronic fatigue that I have has been really bad, and it's been my son's birthday as well. So it's kind of been like I haven't even decorated his cake yet. <laughs> like I didn't even make it this year. I usually make it and make like a really nice pattern on the cake and stuff, but. I haven't done that so yeah um when i feel like this i think cozy familiar reads are kind of the thing i go to um i think the first book i had that with was twilight but i will talk about more that more when i've reviewed midnight sun finally when i've got to a point where i start just going ah, um <laughs> after reading it the next book on my list is one i'm really excited about i love this author um if i move castiel out the way you can see i've got all her book geek girl books um so this is holly smale i think i said that right and the second in her valentine stories um so far from perfect um i read the first one about a year ago it's about um a kardashian style family but they've got a secret um their parents are really wealthy big in movies um the brothers and sisters they're all well i think it's one brother and four sisters um they're all kind of doing their own thing and the first one was told from the perspective of the youngest one i think this is the next oldest girl talking in this one so i'm really looking forward to going back to this family and seeing um well, seeing what was left out of the first one i think there were a lot of questions i had i think there was like a missing child or something at one point and i was like i, I really need to read more <laughs> But I, I love um, Holly's voice anyway, like the Geek Girl books really grabbed me because even though they were quite typical, like rom com -y sort of style, um, like Holly smells so smart and the, the 
the way that um harriet the main character relates in those books is hilarious she'll be like the uh the common sea snail will be like blah 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 when they're trying to mate and right now i feel like that with blah blah, blah. So, <laughs> so it always makes me laugh when she's um she's equating things like that in those books but also like they're kind of autobiographical holly snail used to be a model as well so i think it's kind of um what she knew more and like it feels very much like she was talking to herself i think she uh she's really good at writing the way you would talk which again is a really hard thing to do um which i mentioned like a, a couple of things in an, another video that were really hard to write about and i think writing in a way that's kind of colloquial and grabs a reader because it feels like they're just having a conversation with someone it's a skill and it's not a skill that a lot of people have but Holly Smell has it in droves. Sorry, I just got interrupted by a phone call with my orthodontist. Um, I'm looking into getting braces because I don't know if you've seen how messed up that is. Um, so yeah, my next story, uh, story, book on my pile is a new Sarah Dessen book, The Rest of the Story. I don't think it's that new per se, but it's new in England. Um, and really, I just got it because I always love Sarah Dessen books. Um, the first one I read of hers was Just Listen. And oh my God, like that made me cry so much. Um, and then I read Dreamland, and that's probably one of my favourite books of all time. So I, I don't think Sarah Dessen can do more wrong, much wrong. There are some books where I haven't got up <laughs> at the end, but um, she's still a powerful writer. And I really like that all her books are kind of interlinked as well. So, like, you'll read a story, and then three stories later, that character will appear. It's like a... Um, a cameo role and it's all taken place in the same sort of places in North Carolina um I know one is Lakeview that's the main town and then there's like um I want to call it Colby Bay but I don't think that's right um so yeah it's like it's really interesting seeing how all these characters interact with each other like um I think in Just Listen Remy appeared and she was in I'm gonna have to check oh this lullaby that was the that was Romy's story. Romy and Dexter forever. My next story, uh Kevin Van Wise Date Me Brian Kel Keller. Um Brian <laughs> Bryson Keller. Um so LGBT book. I've got quite a few like LGBT books, but I think a lot of them are written by women and like there's a whole thing about whether you should stay in your lane or whether, you know, writing this about exploration and if you've got that voice in your head that's who you write like um for me like i've been writing a story and there is one character in it whose voice is so strong to me like <laughs> even though i haven't got the first one published at all he really wants to tell his own story so i am writing in the perspective of a 17 year old boy who swears way too much for a young adult novel but um that doesn't mean yeah it, it, it's gray area but it's uh having kevin write this one probably gives a better perspective of what it's actually like to be a gay guy oh okay so she's reading the blurb it says everyone at fairview fairvale academy knows brian Ke stop saying brian bryson keller the super hot soccer captain who doesn't believe in high school relationships they also know about the dare bryson accepted each week he has to date the first person who asks him out a single school week is all anyone gets there have been no exceptions to this none until me that is because Bryce, the brilliant Bryson Keller forgot one thing. He never said it could only be girls, which is a interesting premise. And uh, I look forward to seeing how that blows up in his face before, you know, obviously coming good. Because who wants a novel without a good happily ever after? Or HEA, as uh, a lot of people say. Sorry, you can hear the suds every time I throw the book down on my bed. This next one. Oh, so um, I've been reading this series. My friend Christina... Um, she kind of got me into it and it's so good and I've met the author and he's hilarious <laughs> and uh, I think I threw him a little bit because he was signing my book and he's Irish so when he was writing Siobhan he was like oh do you have a father and, and I was like no I've got no father <laughs> so <laughs> I think he was like I don't know what to do with this um yeah Derek Landy um the I think it's 12th yes 12th Skullduggery Pleasant book um if you've ever read these they're brilliant <laughs> They're so like the humour in there is just so sarcastic and I love that and uh, the descriptions are great as well and like um at the panel I saw with Derek and is it Ian Colfer or Owen Colfer? Um he was talking about how in one battle scene he um 
like you read it as Valkyrie, the main character, is like ripping these posts out of the ground and throwing them at people. And he was like, yeah, my editor scaled me back because those were people in the first draft. <laughs> so uh, that gives you an idea of what these books are about. So, and the last one I read was Midnight, which was where Valkyrie... Um, Valkyrie had to go and rescue her sister Alice so it was a very different tempo to the other books because usually they're spread over a few weeks and Midnight was basically encapsulated in one day which I'm not used to um from Derek and also I think it's so hard to write an entire day in a book like I, yeah <laughs> I, I would never manage it myself um uh, it'd be a good challenge to try and write um yeah, so this, uh, this story is a continuation of what happened in Midnight and also, uh, I was going to say Bedlam, but this is Bedlam. Uh, I keep having to check my thing. Oh, Resurrection. So the original books were a nine part series and then after Resurrection he started this new story. So it's not just um, Valkyrie and Skullduggery, it also contains um, the adventures of someone called Omen, Omen Darkly. His twin brother is supposed to be the next chosen one, the chosen one, but um, he kind of finds himself <laughs> working with Skullduggery and Valkyrie a lot and just kind of messing things up and just thinking he's not very good at anything and he's an interesting character but yeah, you know, my love still for like Valkyrie and Skullduggery and the way they relate to each other and the amount of sarcasm they have and it's always good like reading these and then talking with Christina and our friend Laurie and just like basically fangirling over a series of books. I think like half of these books are like sequels of things I've read. Oh, I've got hair in my face. Uh, yeah, half of these are sequels of books I've already read. So this is uh, Good Girl Bad Blood by Holly Jackson. I'm going to admit something. The first book, um, A Good Girl's Guide to Murder, I wasn't going to pick up, but I was at Yalk and uh, I got to the checkout at the Waterstones um, section with a couple of other books I was picking up. And they were like, oh, would you be interested in this one? I was like, um, and they were like, yours is right here. You can get it signed. And it's like really awkward not to go, uh, okay. <laughs> I felt really bombarded. But having said that, I read a good girl's book to murder and it is so interesting and it's so in depth and there's good humor in there. There's good characterization. There's a couple of twists I didn't quite see coming. So I'm looking forward to reading this. Um, there's a lot of really good young adult crime novels out there as well. Like um, One of Us is Lying. One of Us is Lying by Karen McManus. That's really good. Um, what She Found in the Woods by Josephine Angelini. I loved um, Angel uh, Josephine Angelini's Greek sort of style books. So when I read that she'd done like um, a crime novel, I really wanted to read it. There's a couple of like hints in that one to... Um, Doctor Sleep, that's it. But they call him Doctor Goodnight or something. It's a bit weird, but it's a it's a good story anyway. So yeah, this uh, this is a continuation of A Good Girl's Guide to Mur Murder. And uh, she's done a true crime podcast since um, she, what well, in the first book, sorry, she writes um, a school project, like I think it's for her A levels or something, about a local murder mystery. And um, she uncovers a truth that hasn't really been explored um, throughout the, the actual investigation. So in this book, she's, uh, she's done a podcast, but she's kind of left what she did behind. But um, then she kind of gets involved in another story. So this is going to be a good one to read. Um, I think I'm going to have to be a little less completely off my face with fatigue <laughs> when I read it. But yeah, this, this is one I'm saving for when I'm feeling well. And continuing on the uh, sequel theme, Crooked Kingdom by Lee Bardugo. Um, you got love Lee Bardugo. Um, I only read um, Six of Crows recently, I think either the start of this year or the end of last year. And then I picked this up, I think just after it came out. But her writing is so intense, like I kind of have to have a rest <laughs> when I'm reading it. And like, I did that with... Um, with the Grisha series, the original Grisha series, like, it's just, it was so much, like, for me, like, I don't know if it was the action or, like, the depth of her description or the fact that her world build was so good that I just, I felt like I was in another place, but I felt like I had travelled there as well, and my fatigue was just noping out of it, and I don't know what's going on with my fringe light. Um, so, yeah, um, this is a duology, isn't it? The uh, Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom. 
but you know, I don't even need to read the blurb to know that I'm going to enjoy it. I think I, this is just going to have to be another story I read when I'm feeling well, otherwise I'm just going to like read a couple of pages at a time and I don't like doing that with books. Unless they're like four chapter, four page chapters, in which case I can cope with that. Okay, my next one seems a little bit weird. Um, the only reason I can think of that I picked this one up is that I do have a son. He turned 13 recently. Um, so this is probably like something I bought, like thinking this is how I need to raise my son. So it's called Boys Will Be Boys by Clementine Ford. But um, yeah, it's about toxic masculinity and the patriarchy and stuff. So kind of a feminist book for men so um but i think it might be non-fiction so I'm, I'm probably gonna have to pace myself through this as well um but having said that i think it's probably gonna be like one of those really informative books that you really want to have whether whatever gender you are just to try to get some headway through toxic masculinity which is still rife in our society my next story is another author i really love um Cat Clark, We Are Young. Cat Clark is such a great author. Again, <laughs> I'm just going to keep saying that, aren't I? Um, she kind of goes with like the murder mystery vibe sometimes, but more mystery than murder, I think. Um, but I remember meeting her at a different Yark as well, and it was so interesting like talking with her um, because I'd really loved the story. I don't know if you can see it on my shelving actually. Um, right here. Undone by Cat Clark. Undone is so good. It's about this girl whose best friend kills himself and she seeks revenge. And there's a scene in it. And I was talking to Kurt Clark about it. And I was like, I was kind of like gripping my face, like, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. <laughs> and this character, you could tell she was about to lie about something really big. And she did. And I was just like, oh my God, I can't believe she did that. And when I, I, when I was talking to her, I told her that. And she was like, yeah, that was a bit of a risk. I was like, yeah, but it worked so well with what this girl was doing. She was like, even though she was getting revenge, she was kind of ruining her own life. She was in improving her life, but not really recognising that at the same time. So that was a bit, yeah. So, um, I again, the blurb didn't catch me, Cat Clark did, because she's another writer I think can't do much wrong. So, um, Sorry, there's a recommendation on the back, which I don't always like, but Sarah Crossan um, did that, and she's an amazing author as well. She wrote the one books, uh, the one books, she wrote the book one, which is free verse. Um, I don't know if that's back here as well. No. <laughs> Sorry, I usually put the ones I really like on this shelf. Um, yeah, one's really good, but... Again, I, I think I only read an excerpt at one point and I was still in tears. Um, it's about um, conjoined twins. They're conjoined at the hip and one of them is making them both sick. So they have to be separated, but it's a risky procedure. And then it's like them building their friendships because they've finally gone to school, but then they get odd looks because, you know, they are conjoined twins. So, yeah, it's a really interesting read, but guaranteed tearjerker. Um, so my next one has one of my usual favourite, buy one get one free, <laughs> buy one get one half price um, stickers on. It's uh, uh, The Truth About Keeping Secrets by Savannah Brown, I was going to say Susanna then. Um, another murder mystery story, I haven't read it yet. I thought the cover is really cute because you see that keyhole, yeah, it's actually a hole, so then you see the person in the middle there. Oh, that's kind of waxy. So... Sydney's dad is the only therapist for miles around their small Ohio town. He knows everybody's secrets. He's also unexpectedly dead, um, is the, the gripping line there. <laughs> so it's going to be an interesting one, and I look forward to seeing how Sydney copes with that and unlocks all the truth. And yeah, there must be a secret that's led to that happening. So yeah, I look forward to that. Um, it's quite the same book as well, so it probably won't take that long. Um, sorry, there's yet another buy one get one off price sticker over the name, but this is Lisa Williamson, Paper Avalanche. Um, I think that the blurb at the back was the one that grabbed me on this one. That and the really cute um, cover. I remember seeing um, Julie Mayhew 
uh, Yalk talking with her agent and they were saying something like yellows are sellers like if you've got yellow on the front cover you're more likely to buy it and I don't know if you can see that there's about three books there that have yellow on four actually five color one up top there yeah <laughs> yellow works um oh and they've got the color I don't know if I'm the only one who's like that but like whenever I read a book that's got this I love hearing like the the pages separate <laughs> on the color thing like as you turn the pages it's like it's good um so yeah the uh the blurb Rose mum is a compulsive hoarder. Their home is a horror show, so Rose has become an expert at hiding from social services, from friends, from having any sort of normal life. Until Tanvi shows up and Rose's carefully constructed walls start to come crashing down around her. Um, so yeah, I love hoarders. Like, I watch um, hoarders every now and again, and yes, it can be disgusting, but I love watching, you know, how people make attachments to things and how they learn to let things go and talk through the things that had led them to do that sort of thing and um i feel like i'm one to talk because i hoard books and shoes so um i'm not letting them go like maybe the shoes maybe the shoes get a bit knackered and have to go but not the books not the books uh my next one it's two can keep a secret not can you keep a secret so again karen mcmanus um Oh, this is not the sequel one. I've read the two that are like duologies. One of us is lying and um What's the other one? Oh, I can't remember. It wasn't as good though. Um but yeah, this is about homecoming queens. And one of them dies, I think. Or both of them die. Oh no, both of them die. So yeah, this is gonna be um another interesting one that I was <laughs> I'm such a, I'm such a sucker for a bargain <laughs> like that's why I love going to Yak as well they're like do you want a book for a fiver yes um 300 pounds later whoops so yeah I'm looking forward to that Karen McManus book um the next one going back to Sarah Crossan who I referenced earlier uh, oh this one's signed by the author I was like why is there two stickers on there so yeah um I don't think I've ever got this at Yelp, but I'd seen it around. Toffee is about a girl who gets mistaken for someone else when she helps out this elderly woman. But I think there's something a bit more going on because Sarah Crossan, like, she writes twists really well. And uh, I don't know if this one's in free verse, but she does free verse. Really well. Yeah, it is. It's free verse. Like, I know that would put some people off reading free verse, but... Sarah Crossan is just amazing with the beauty of her words when she does this sort of thing and because it's free verse it doesn't have to rhyme so that uh that appeals as well so um so I was just looking at the the bottom recommendations I think I've read Moonrise which is another free verse book about a boy whose brother is on death row um but he really shouldn't be but he uh might get the electric chair um Apple and Rain is that it yeah that was a quite sweet story. Um, I think it was about a mum who abandoned her child or wasn't very good with her child. And then The Weight of Water, I have not read and I have not got, but I will have to get it. And <laughs> again, yellow book. Um, but I will definitely be reading all of those. Well, The Weight of Water as well as this, because again, Sarah Crossan just, I don't think she can do any wrong. And there are so many like Hollies and Sarahs who write really well. Um, so yeah i get them muddled up a little bit oh this one has a receipt in <laughs> classy just gonna take that out so this is diary of a confused feminist i'm just double checking this at that one. yeah kate weston um again i think it was just the cover that captured me and also the fact that it's about a feminist and i'm hoping it is in diary form because i like that it feels like you're reading a bunch of like little letters and you're getting the insight into someone's mind and I, sorry my French is annoying um yeah I really like that about books uh, I'm looking forward to that even though some of that blurb kind of puts me off a little bit so like, the stuff about menstrual cups and stuff is that's on the back cover um that gives you an idea of what's in the book as well so I think this is going to be a very frank talk and I might get a little bit uncomfortable at times but um if you don't come out of your comfort zone how can you grow i guess um oh my goodness so um 
I bought this in the work, so it's in like a little box set. I actually already have How Hard Can Love Be, and I've read that. But uh, this is like a, not really a trilogy, but it's like three friends who tell their different stories and it gets so feminist. And um, I think it's What's a Girl Got to Do? When Holly, Holly Bourne this time, when Holly was writing this, um, she I think she put something on Twitter and then everything that happened in the book kind of happened in real life too and it just sounded crazy to me so um yeah I'm really interested in reading all of, well, the last two of these um I have seen Am I Normal yet for the it's so cheap for years and um it's one of those books I've kind of picked up and I've been like mm, and then put down but knowing it's the first in the trilogy and I've only read the second one I, I think I've got to read it it also means I've got two copies of How I Can Love Be um because I do that sometimes but it was seven quid for three so you know three books for the price of one um the next one is also Holly Bourne um she's an amazing author um so this is Pretending this is her second adult novel I believe yeah Pretending is her second adult novel um she's really pretty as well and really funny in real life um so yeah i read her first adult novel which was really interesting and then i read um her next teen novel i can't remember what it's called now but the themes were really similar even if the characters weren't and i actually i kind of had a moment of i think i'm reading the same book twice so um i had to stop <laughs> for a while and then go back to it but um, she's an amazing, amazing author. Um, she does feminism really well as well. Um, yeah, um, that is what I had down there. There were so many books. This has taken so long to film. Um, I, I'm trying not to do too long a video because I don't want to bore people, but also like, how much can you really say about a book? But um, I hope you've stuck with me and you enjoyed the books I've pulled out and seeing how much young adult I do bring into my life <laughs> and uh if any of those grab you I yeah read or if you've read them let me know um be interesting to see how other people have read them and how, what they've taken away from those books um and I think that's it so if you like this video please like and subscribe and comment um yeah it, it's like I feel so cheap saying that but at the end of the day you don't know if you're putting out the content that people want to see unless they do give you feedback so and positive feedback is always a good thing to help growth right so i'd really appreciate that and um thank you again for watching i'll see you next time